In this video, we're going to learn a little more about the user interface within a diagnostic study in Express. We're going to begin by looking at the hierarchy panel. You use this panel to specify the level of repair for a given diagnostic study. In other words, how deep do you want to test and isolate failures within your system? In this system, we have five different hierarchical elements, the ECU and the four disk assemblies, which are all on the right-hand side of this panel. And on the left-hand side, there are a series of settings that you can choose. We'll just look at the specified numbers of levels. By default, everything isolates to a single level, which means all of your assemblies are being isolated as if they were a replaceable part. You can change that to all levels, which means you're going to descend down within all of these hierarchical assemblies and isolate to the components at the lowest level of all your models. Or you can specify a number. Say you want to go two levels down and you can customize the tree by simply expanding and collapsing folders. When a folder is collapsed for an assembly, that means it's isolating to that assembly as if it were a single level repair part. And if you expand it, it's testing down the elements within that assembly. Now let's look at the detection options panel. There's a drop box that allows you to select the algorithm for fault detection. The algorithm is a set of weightings and rules that are applied to define which tests are chosen first in the diagnostics. In this case, we're going to use the default algorithm detect malfunctions with fewest tests, which will choose first the test that is most likely to detect a failure. And then the second test in the detection order will choose the test that is most likely to fail given that first test passed, and so on. In the panel on the right is where we choose which test sets we want to use in this study. And we're actually going to right click and select all of the test sets rather than selecting them one by one. All right, now we'll calculate our fault detection. In the diagnostic flow diagram, testing starts at the top and moves downward as tests pass. Initially, we can see that all of the items on the right are colored gray, meaning that we do not yet know anything about their diagnostic status. As we move down the tree, you can see that our system is being gradually proven good. The dark green items have been proven completely good, and the light green ones are partially proven, meaning that one or more functions of that component have been proven good, either at the displayed level or at a lower level, but the diagnostic status is not yet known for the entire item. When we reach the end of the detection sequence, you can see that almost everything is green. All right, so now let's look at fault isolation. The fault isolation panel has a list of algorithms just like the fault detection. And if you remember, in the previous video, we used the common cause half-split failure probabilities algorithm. However, we're going to use the multiple fault half-split failure probabilities algorithm for this example. This is an algorithm you'd want to use if you're testing in situations where multiple failures can occur. This will give us slightly larger groups, but will be guaranteed to isolate to a group containing a failed component regardless of how many things are malfunctioning. Once again, we're going to right click and select all of our test sets. And we'll calculate fault isolation. And now the flow diagram on the left has been expanded to include isolation tests. Now here's our first detection test. And if that were to pass, it proves a certain amount of our system good. Now let's say our second test, brake fluid low, were to fail. Now we can see that it's colored two of our items in the design yellow, which means they're a primary suspect. In this case, if it's reporting that the brake fluid is low, it's saying that it's either a problem with the electronics or with the sensor itself. Now we can run a built-in test. And when that test fails, it tells us that the problem is in the ECU. And because we isolated down to two levels, we can actually descend down within the ECU and see that it was isolated specifically to the RISC processor within the ECU. The other thing I'd like to point out here is that the bulb that was under suspicion in the previous step in the diagnostics has been turned blue rather than green. This is a good time to mention that we can quickly understand the interpretation of the use of color at any time by clicking on this icon on the toolbar to invoke the Express Color Legend. When you're in the diagnostics, it's going to tell you what the colors on the screen mean. Here the blue bulb is considered a secondary suspect. Now this bulb here that was previously under suspicion has not been proven good, so in that situation it turns blue. It may still have a problem, 
but we may find that it's working properly once we fix the problem with the ECU where we know there's a problem. When we click on the background here, we can get the isolation statistics panel. And this isolation statistics panel is showing us that we are isolating failures to a fault group containing a single component 56% of the time. We're detecting all of our failures, but we're only isolating them unambiguously 56% of the time. And if we want to see the actual sizes of the fault groups that are isolated, they're listed here on the left. We can see that there are 101 fault groups that contain a single component, and we isolate to that 56% of the time based on failure probabilities. And if we scroll down, we can see that we have some larger groups all the way to size 25, each contributing to our isolation calculations. So obviously, we'd want to improve this design by breaking up some of these fault groups with additional testing or whichever manner we're going to use. We can see some of these larger fault groups over here in the tree. Let me click on one of these fault groups, and you can see the status when we isolate to that fault group spread across the design here. The ECU is a secondary suspect. We have quite a few things that are turned green. We also have some dark red parts, which means they're isolated at this level, as well as some light red parts, which we mentioned earlier, means that they were isolated down at a lower level. Now, if we wanted to improve this fault group, what we can do is actually view some of the detailed information by right-clicking on the fault group and selecting Fault Group Details. This will produce the Fault Group Details report for just this fault group. And listed in here are all the components in probability order, with the most likely to fail at the top, as well as replacement cost and replacement time, if we would have entered those into our model. Now in this case, we can see the total probability for the group is about 1.4%. And if we look at the most likely part to fail, that's 1.1%. So the majority of the failures in this group will be due to the brake fluid, or BF level sensor, which is the item at the top of the list. So if we were able to develop some sort of test that could prove that the BF level sensor is working properly or isolates a failure to that sensor, then it would break it out from this fault group and the entire 1.1% would be moved from this fault group size of 13 to the fault group of size 1, which greatly helps our overall testability statistics. With that said, however, just clicking on large fault groups and running the fault group statistics report isn't always the most efficient way to investigate failures with an express. One of the more useful reports that can assist in this regard is the fault group rankings report, as we have touched upon in the previous video, and will be introduced to a few more express reports in the following video tutorial in this series. This concludes our video on exploring diagnostics, understanding the interface.